is his timing. His timing. And thank God for unanswered prayers, Father God. We thank you, Father God, that your word never changes, Father God. That it's the same today, tomorrow, and forever, Father God. We just thank you for everything that you give us, Father God. And we give you all of the glory and the honor. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Somebody give God some glory up in this house. We got a beautiful day. It's not hot. It's not cold. We're all healthy. He said, you have been made whole by your faith. Father God, we thank you for a full house. We thank you for those watching over the internet. We thank you, Father God, for those that are across the street, up the street, down the street, around beside the street. Because the street's in the house. Woo! Come on! It ain't about the streets today. It ain't about my last name being street. But I tell you what, I come to the streets because I am a street. And he said, look at your last name if you want a ministry. I said, Father God, send me where nobody else. Okay, come on. We'll go visit, but we ain't going to hang out. Come on, saints. Can I get an amen? amen. I tell you what, today y'all are a beautiful sight. We've got all kind of blessings that the Lord has bestowed upon us. We are healthy. Somebody yeah. say, I am healthy. I am, I am whole. I am whole. I'm, alive. I'm alive. I am not going to die. I am going to live. And I am going to proclaim the works of the Lord. And I'm going to give him glory. I'm going to give him honor. Saints, today I come to you with an interesting question. Last week we talked about finding the narrow path. We spoke about the gate at the end of that narrow path or is the gate at the beginning of the narrow path? Saints, at some point we've got to understand that there is one way his name is Yahushua Hamashiach, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. He is the only way. He is the only truth. He is the only life. And he said, if you want to come in, you've got to enter in through the door. But thanks, once you come in through that door, you come in and out and you find pasture. You find wholeness. You find healing. There's a path that you're going to have to get on. So I'm coming to you today to tell you there's a path. A narrow path, a path of chastisement, a path of holiness, a path of righteousness, a path of honoring other people, a path of loving other people, a path of putting yourself down and raising others up, a path of repentance, a path of obedience, a path of a lifestyle sold out to Jesus Christ. You can't have one foot in the kingdom of God and one foot in the kingdom of the devil. If you have a foot in one and a foot in the other, you're fooling yourself because both of your feet are either in one or the other. You cannot straddle that fence spiritually. It is impossible because you cannot be the light and live in the dark. Because if you are light, you will cancel out the darkness. It's just that simple. So today I want to bring to you a simple statement. The narrow path. Is it about chastisement or is it about life? Well, I'm going to answer your question and you won't have to hang out. That narrow path is going to be about love and blessings and all along the love and blessings you will have affliction. You will have yes. chastisement yes. of the Lord. Yes. You will be broken and remade and broken and remade and broken and remade so that he can get you to a place where you are pure perfection because when he looks at you he wants to see his reflection he wants to see his reflection in you if you are the lord's child today you are on a path it is a separate path it is an alone path and you have to get on that path and you have to go with the lord and you cannot walk that any old way you want to. You cannot bulldoze your way down that path. You can't pick your way through it one day and bulldoze down it the other day. You've got to get in it. You've got to pick it. You've got to place your feet according to the word of God and you've got to maneuver that path and he said I will never 
horrible, and you ask him to help you to stay on that path. You might fall off the wagon tonight. You can crawl back on that wagon tomorrow. But at some point, he's going to close the door of opportunity. Don't be one of those ones that came through the gate and decided maybe it's too late. He said it's never too late. But at some point, you've got to expose the sins in you as being great. And he will forgive them through your repentance. And you will go in and out of that door. And you will find rest for your soul. You will find peace for your soul. And you will find happiness. But that path is a path of affliction. It is a path of dying to yourself. And it is a path of chastisement. But we don't want to hear about the chastisement. They want to all hear about, I'm getting a new car. I'm getting a new lover. I'm getting a new job. I'm getting a big check. I'm getting a new everything. I'm getting it all. I'm going to have what I want. They don't want no chastisement. They don't want no affliction. They want the easy peasy believism. There is no easy peasy believism in the word of God. It is riddled with blessings and honor and glory and power unto the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, not to me, myself, and I. Where is that in the Bible? Where is the chastisement? I'm glad you asked that this morning. If you will go to Isaiah 42, verse 16, he said, and I will lead the blind, that's you and me, by a way that they know not. That's you and me. We don't know the way. We're blind until Jesus opens our eyes. And people don't want to hear it because of their rebellion. He said, and in the paths that they have not known, I will make them walk. I will make darkness light before them and crooked places straight. These things have I done to them and have not forsaken them. He says, I am the way maker, I am the path maker, and I am the one that will place your feet on it, but you've got to make a decision if you're going to stay on it, because he's not going to force you to die to yourself. The word of God is clear, saints. In Psalm chapter 119, verse 105, thy word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. There's no darkness on this path. There's no darkness, there's no sin, it is riddled with affliction and dying to self, but the major blessing that you will receive is the fact that he said, eye has not seen, nor ear has heard, nor has it entered in the heart of man what I have planned and purpose for those that love me. If you love him, you will obey him. If you love him, you will serve him. You will get on that path and no matter how hard it hurts, you will die to self, and you will rise to life everlasting. Nobody said it was going to be easy. No. Nobody said it was going to be a bed of roses, because roses have thorns. Just yeah. ask your mama today. It's mama's day. It's yeah. mother's day. Let me tell you what, it's not mother's day. It's not the day that the Lord has made to honor the mother. He said, honor the mother in Genesis. Every day is a day to honor your mother. Every day is a day to honor your mother and your father according to the narrow path. They just picked a day out to make a whole lot more money for their pockets. Come on, saints. Your mama will tell you that that path is riddled with roses and thorns are on the stem. I love the roses for mama. But somebody got to remove the thorns. And that only one can do that is Jesus. Hallelujah. If you go to Psalm 119 a little bit further, you keep reading, you'll get to verse 133. It says, direct my steps in thy path. I'm not reading you the King James watered down version. You can get mad, you can get glad, but get glad in the same pants you got mad in because King James, they didn't get it right either. None of us have the exact truth, but if you've got the Holy Ghost, he'll open your eyes, he'll direct your path, and
said in Psalm 119, 133, it says, direct my steps in thy path. You direct my steps in your path. Don't expect to get on this path after you've come through the door and think you're going to do it your way because you're not going to do it your way. He said, my way is the highway of holiness. Yeah, go look that up. It's in the word. You do a little studying. You do a little bit of research. You do a little bit of walking in that narrow path. He said, I will direct your steps in my path. He said, the steps of a righteous man are ordered of the Lord, and he delights in that man's way. Let me take you a little bit further, saints, since we're on a journey this morning on Mother's Day, which is the holy day, the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice in it. It ain't about mama. You need to be you need to be calling her, respecting her, and honoring her every day. Every single day. Are you a liar and you're not on the narrow path? I love you. God bless you. That's the truth of God's word. In Jeremiah chapter 6, the word of God in the Old Testament. We can't go to the New Testament until we look at the Old Testament because Jesus is the Old Testament. Jesus is the New Testament. Jesus is the commandments in the flesh. And you can't get out of the flesh unless you get into the Word. And He is the Word. Old Testament, New Testament, you're a liar if you say that it ain't all one word. He is the word. You can't separate the Old Testament and the New Testament. No. They're different covenants. Yes. But they're both for my life and for your life. No, I'm not under the old law because the old law brings death. But the letter of law bringing death points me to Yahushua. Without the law, I can't know about Yahushua. And the Lord God Almighty is the life and the spirit. Put them together, saints. Shake them up. And you got Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. You can't pick and choose what you want out of this word. Jeremiah 6, chapter 6, verse 8. Be chastised. O Jerusalem, lest my soul abhor you, lest I make you desolate like an uninhabited land. He's talking to Jerusalem. He's talking to the believers in Yahweh, Yahuwah, God the Father. Come on, saints. He's talking to Jerusalem. Be chastised. The Gentiles weren't on the picture at that point. Go down to verse 15. Now they are ashamed because they had committed abomination. But the impudent are not ashamed at all. Neither do they know what chastisement is. Therefore they shall fall among them that fall. At the time that I visit them with judgment, they shall be overthrown, says the Lord. I didn't say it. I didn't make it up. He said it. You do what you want with the information. It's time to wake up. Verse 16. Thus says the Lord, stand in the ways and see and ask for the old paths and see where is the good way and walk in it and find rest for your souls. But you said, we will not walk therein. It's your decision. You will be chastised. You will be loved and you will be disciplined, you will be corrected, and you will obey. Most folks have no idea what chastisement is. All they can think about is somebody getting a mm, whooped out of them. Well, the Lord chastised me. He whooped me in the woodshed. What does that mean? Does that mean your daddy is going to go get a, a switch? Your daddy in heaven's going to get a switch and he's going to cut the blood out of your legs. No, that's not what that means. Saints, if you'll go study, you'll find out that means he's going to come visit you. He's going to come visit you. He's going to come visit all of us. He will visit us. He will discipline us. And he will love us. But we don't want to be disciplined. 
We don't want to be chastised. God wouldn't chastise me. Well, he will me. I don't have a problem. I love for him to chastise me and correct me because that means I'm on the narrow path. I understand that he loves me. I've stumbled. I've fallen off the path. I'm getting back on. And sometimes it's just something simple that he's trying to teach us in the place where he's got us. I was reading and studying for this. And the Lord showed me many of my children despise my chastisement. They despise it and they are in denial. Let me tell you something, saints. When I found this, I was excited about chastisement. And you have forgotten the teachings which has been told to you as to children. Well, where is that? That's in Hebrews chapter 12. We're going to go to Hebrews chapter 12, verses 5 through 14, saints. Let me prove to you that if the Old Testament believers were chastised, the New Testament believers are going to be chastised. And if you want to get on the narrow path, you will be chastised or you are illegitimate sons and daughters. Oh, that hurts. If you don't discipline a child, look around. Chaos. Mamas and daddies, it's Mama's Day. I'm pointing at you. I'm going to give you a whole bouquet today. How's that? A whole bouquet. Mamas and daddies, you're going to be responsible for the children. Because if they're not learning the old path, and they're not learning about Jesus, they're going to be all kind of confusion and chaos, and you're going to a socialistic government, and there's going to be nothing but hell on earth because we as parents have dropped the ball, and you want to blame it on the kids and the new generation. You might want to look at your own back door. You might want to look at how you're parenting. And I can tell you what, the psychiatrists don't know what they're talking about. This is the basic instructions before yeah. leaving earth and we've left yeah. the children out and you're looking at a forgotten generation and they do not want to be chastised. No. If you whoop a kid, you'll go to jail. Well, you bring me a kid. <laughs> and you have, you have me birth a child and tell me I can't whoop my child. You might as well take them and feed them. You take them and feed them. Because the word of God says... He loves those whom he chastises. If you don't love your child, you'll never correct them, and you'll never teach them the truth. How would I get off on that rant? Well, let me tell you what. Let's go back to Hebrews chapter 12, verse 5. And you have forgotten the teaching which has been told to you as to children. My son, despise not the chastening of the Lord. Not let, listen, saints, listen to this. If you don't want to be chastised, it's because you think it's going to hurt. It's going to be painful. You're going to get a physical beating. That's not what we're talking about. He said you've forgotten the teaching which has been told to you as to children. My son, that's all of us say, I am a son of the most high God. It's not about race or religion or even what sex you are, what gender you are on earth. We are all sons of the most high. He said, my son, despise not the chastening of the Lord. No, let your soul faint when you are rebuked of him, the Lord. For whom the Lord loves, he chastens and he disciplines the son with whom he is pleased. He loves you. He loves you and he will discipline the child that he is pleased with because he wants you to have eternal life and not be separated from him. Verse 7, now therefore endure discipline because God, Yahuwah, acts toward you as toward sons. For where is the son whom the father does not discipline? Well, look around, saints. There's a world full of forgotten children according to Hosea 4 and 6. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. And because you have rejected my knowledge, I have rejected you from being a king and a priest unto me. And your children will be forgotten. He says, I will forget your children. Saints, 
If your children are forgotten, it's because somebody didn't train them up in the way they should go so that when they get old, they won't depart from it. You are responsible, Mama. You are responsible, Daddy. Not the pastor, not the preacher, not the teacher, and not the government. Now, therefore, endure discipline because God acts toward you as toward a son. Where is the son whom the father does not discipline? Look around. We've all fallen short of the glory of God. None of us are perfect and none of us have arrived. And let me tell you something, saints, if you study your word, you're not saved till you leave the bodysuit and get to Jesus face to face. That means the bodysuit's gone, you're dead, and you're with him. We will not be saved until we get there. We are in the process. We got saved. Now we are working out our salvation with fear and trembling. Verse 8, Hebrews chapter 12, verse 8. But, here we go. Here we go, there's the but. It always cancels out everything before it, doesn't it? If you are without discipline, that very discipline by which every man is trained, then you are strangers and not sons. In the King James Version, you'll find out that they use a quite hearty word. I'm not going to say it, but I can say it means illegitimate. Furthermore, verse 9, if our fathers of the flesh corrected us and we respected them, how much more then should we be willing to be under subjection to our spiritual father and live? For they only for a short while disciplined us as seemed good to them, but Yahuwah, God, corrects us for our advantage that we might become partakers of his holiness. We're walking on the path. Jesus is the door. You don't get on the narrow path without going through the door. And once you go through the door, you're on the narrow path, and it's up to you to stay on the path. He corrects us for our advantage that we might become partakers of his holiness. No discipline, saints. No chastisement at the time is expected to be a thing of joy but of sorrow, but in the end it produces the fruit of peace and righteousness to those who are trained by it. Lord, if you don't correct me, if you don't visit me, if you don't come and tell me it's wrong, I'm not going to know. I'm not going to know. I want to stay on the path. What is the path? The path is the word. If you will stay in the word of God, you will stay on the path, saints. Wake up. The path is the word. Jesus is the word. The word made flesh and dwelling amongst us full of grace and humility. He is the Savior. Nothing or nobody can save us. No. You can walk the path less traveled, but that don't mean nothing. If you're not in the word, you're just walking a path. You look like you're all holy and all separated and all godly and you're going to church and you're shouting and hallelujah and on Saturday night there ain't no telling what you're doing. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. But Sunday I'm in church. Saints, no discipline at the time is expected to be a thing of joy, but of sorrow. But in the end, it produces the fruits of peace and righteousness to those who are trained by it. Verse 12. Therefore, everybody say, therefore. therefore. Come on, I got one therefore. This therefore. is the good part. Therefore. Everybody say, therefore. 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 Be, courageous. Be courageous. Come on, saints, be courageous. Say that out of your face. You got a pie hole, say, I'm going to be courageous. I'm going to be strong. I'm not going to give up. He said, and make straight the paths for your feet. The shortest distance between two points is a straight line. You see the path is straight and it's narrow. Make straight the path for your feet so that the member which is lame may not suffer but be healed. Do you want to be healed today? Yes. Then get in the word of God. You want to be whole today? Get in the word of God. You want to be all that you can be? Be it for Jesus or you're going to be it for the devil, but you can't serve two masters. Verse 14, and I'm almost done because this is a good word. I hope it sinks in. Verse 14, Hebrews 12 and 14 says, follow peace 
with all men and holiness. I said, follow peace. You gotta have peace with them before you can live holy. Follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. If you think you can live any old way you want to and not live holy, let's go over to the book of 1 John. 1 John chapter 4. I'm so, let me see. Yeah, chapter 4, verse 20. <coughs> if a man says, I love God, I love you, who I love Jesus, but he hates his brother, he's a liar. That's the word of God. For he who does not love his brother, whom he has seen, how can he love Yahuwah, God, the Father, whom he has not seen? And this commandment we have received from him, that he who loves God ought to love his brother also. Saints, there's one more scripture for me to share with you, and this will sum it all up. It's in Galatians chapter 6 verse 16 and upon those who follow this path what path this path be peace and be mercy is this the wide path or is this the narrow path this is the narrow path and you're not gonna see jesus unless you're on the narrow path living the narrow life living the narrow-minded christian Biblical narrative. Oh, I said it. I don't care what you accuse us of. I'm going to live with Jesus forever and eternity. I will not be separated and I will not be deceived. And upon those who follow this path, be peace and mercy. And upon the Israel of God, be peace and mercy. Israel. If you are born again and you are Abraham's seed, you are heirs according to the promise. Saints, I want to ask you today, are you on the narrow path? If you've fallen off the path, get back on the path. Amen. Amen. If you stumbled and skipped your knees, get up. Get on the narrow path. It's rocky. It's got sticks and stones, but the Word of God says if you'll pick your path according to my Word and not according to your flesh, abundant life. Saints, are you ready for abundant life? Or are you ready to be broke, busted, and disgusted? If you'll get in this law, the whole entire Genesis to Revelation, you will have life, you will have life more abundantly, yes. and you will be chastised. Yes. You will be visited by the Lord. You yes. will be disciplined by the Lord. Yes. And just like the bed of roses, the pathway lined with roses, you're going to find many thorns. Yes. But if you will get in this word, he'll show you how to maneuver the sticks and the stones and the thorns. He'll show you. Yeah. You're not coming out unscathed. You're not coming out without a being afflicted. And you're not coming out without suffering. Right. If my Lord suffered, and he's a suffering servant, what makes me think, I'm going to get out of here. I'm not going to suffer. I'll leave you with this, saints. Jesus is Lord. We love you. God bless you. We're here to serve. We have food, we have refreshments in terms of holy water. We got some candy. Anybody want some candy, some chocolate? No, it's not one of them kind of kind of days. It's just a, a little something something. We love you, God bless you. And we ask that you continue to glorify the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Be encouraged, saints, because if you're being chastised, he loves you because he's not going to chastise. He's not going to chastise those that are not his. Love him today. Appreciate him today. And be the one 
that realizes the narrow path, you look around, there ain't a whole lot of people on it with you. Only eight people made it onto the boat, saints. Okay? We love you. God bless you. Sister with a testimony. Another sister with a testimony. Several of the saints of God out here this morning. We love you. God bless you. Let us serve you. And if anybody chooses to have communion this morning, we are going to take communion if you hang out. Oh. <laughs>